So, question two then from paper two of the 2015 new hire. Here we go. Functions of functions. Composition of functions. Seven marks. And they look nice and straightforward. No fractions there. This is a little bit higgledy-piggledy, but never mind. It's not a fraction. So for the first two marks, find an expression for f of g of x, part a. Well, that simply says f is acting on g of x. So whatever g of x does, you feed that to f. And what does g of x do? It does this. So 1 plus x, 3 minus x plus 2 is what you feed in. That gets you a mark. And the second mark is for saying, now what does f do to anything it gets hold of? And of course, that x is not the same as that x. That x is just a convenient placeholder for anything you care to put in. So whatever value is given to x here, it produced some other number, and that's the number that goes in here instead. That's, you don't just replace that x for that x. So this says, whatever you put in, you do 10 plus whatever you put in. So, I do 10 plus whatever I've put in, and conveniently it's add, so I don't need to put another bracket in. 1 plus x times 3 minus x plus 2. And apparently, that's your second mark. You don't even have to tidy it up. Of course, your instinct is, get that tidied up, because it looks like a quadratic. Certainly look at this, a 10 and a 2. Two numbers floating about that could just easily go together. But no, you'll get the mark just for doing this part. It will need tidying up, of course, in part B. So if you did tidy it up now, then you'd have got those marks allocated retrospectively when you do part B. So what is part B? Express f of g of x in the form p x plus q squared plus r. In other words, complete the square for three marks. Well, now that's no use to you, so you'll need to expand that out and gather it up. So what have we got? I think straight away I'll do my 10 plus 2. I was crying out, so multiplying out this bracket. It'll be 3 minus x squared, first times first, last times last, and then we've got a minus x and a plus 3x, which is a plus 2x. So that equals negative x squared plus 2x plus 15. Or rather, I should say, f of g of x is equal to that. I should have put it in there. Now, this isn't an equation. That's not equal to anything. So I can't tamper with this value by dividing out numbers. You won't like that negative, but just take it out. You know the pattern for the difference of two squares, and it works very easily when it's just an x squared. So take out that negative... And leave the 15 out of it as well. You know that's not the number that works. And work on this part. So that means I had the negative of x squared, but that'll have to be minus 2x. And of course, this is the part you work between. What's the square that would produce this? Square the first, square the last. In the middle, it's twice the product. So that must have been an x, and that must just be minus 1. Now I can do square the last. So in fact, I wanted a plus 1 to complete that square. But it wasn't just a 1 I put in, it was a negative 1. So that part's extra, so counteract it by adding on 1. Or you could say, I need a negative 1, and it'll have to come from that 15. So if you take negative 1 off the 15, you've got the same effect, you end up with 16. And I didn't mention the marks there at all. So the marks were, obviously, 1 for tidying it up. The next one for knowing how to deal with that negative is just taking it out and producing these two parts. I'll put that here. And the third one was finally getting the 16. Now, there is another way, which is longer in this case, but it's a technique that you use all over the place. You use it in the wave function. When you have one expression involving a sine and a cosine, and then that expanded one, again with sines and cosines, and you equate the corresponding parts. You equate corresponding coefficients. You could do that here. Here's a quadratic. Expand that, that'll be a quadratic. And you can equate the corresponding coefficients. So I'll do that. Which means the first bit would still be the first marks for getting it like this. But now you're going to have to go to the trouble of expanding this. So that'll be p times, expanding that would be square the first twice the product, square the last. So altogether it becomes px squared plus 2pqx plus p 
PQ squared plus R. And I'll just emphasize the fact that those two terms go together by putting a little aesthetic bracket around them. Now you can compare them term for term because they're meant to be the same. So term for term, that would be comparing the x squared terms. This says P, this says negative 1, so straight away P equals negative 1. Now doing it that way, that was the first mark. Now the x terms, that says 2PQ. 2PQ I now know to be, since P is negative 1, that's negative 2Q should equal 2 x term, x term, which means that q is also negative 1. It's not a mark. That says constant. Now compare the constant terms. p q squared plus r. Oh dear. p q squared plus r. Well, now I know p is negative 1. q is negative 1. And that's squared. Plus r should equal 15. Well, that's 1, negative 1. So take it across and add it, means that r is equal to 16. And you still don't got the mark, because you have to put it back into the original form, because it asks you to express it like this, so it's a much longer way. But it is a very precise technique, comparing corresponding coefficients. So finally I can say this, that means that f of g of x would be, in this form, p was negative 1, so that would be negative 1, which is just negative, x Q was negative 1, so x minus 1, squared, plus r, plus 16, as before. And only now do you get that third mark if you do it this way. And finally, part c. Another function, h, is given by 1 over f of g of x. I just have to watch the wording of this, because it's always that thing to do with the domain. What values of x cannot be in the domain. Well, f of g of x was either this or this. It doesn't matter which it is, so I'll just call it that. You can't divide by zero, which means that f of g of x cannot be equal to zero. Or you could say, cannot divide by zero. Or you could say, the denominator cannot be zero. Well, that means you've got a choice of two ways of finding this. You can either use this form of it or this form of it. Whichever might be faster. Well, let's take this one first of all. Negative x squared plus 2x plus 15. I'll put it down as cannot be equal to zero because you'll just be solving it the same way as an equation. Now, this time it is part of a balance. So I can say, I'm just going to change that all over. Divide it all by negative one or flip the signs, whatever you like. And of course, I'll be the same backwards. That'll be ooh, minus 2x minus 15. Factorise that. This is a little faster than that one. Multiply to give 15 with a difference of 2. That'll be 3 and 5. The negative of the middle term must go to the larger. So that'll be this one. And then finally we've got x equals either negative 3 or x equals 5, except it was this not equal to. So those are the two numbers they can't be. But I'll just word it the way it said here, although you get the mark for this. The first mark was for realising that the, you can't have a denominator of zero. And the second mark was just finding the two numbers, whether you wrote x is not equal to or x is equal to. But I think I'll just finish off by saying, if it says what values of x cannot be in the domain, I'm going to finish it this way. x equal to negative 3 and x equal to 5 cannot be in the domain. Because after all, when you're sitting in the exam, you don't know what's going to be in the marking scheme, so you want to be as precise as possible. What would this method have looked like? Negative x minus 1 squared plus 16 cannot be equal to 0. Or you could just put equal to 0 in both of them and put something like not at the beginning. That means that x minus 1 squared, taking that across is negative, and then taking the negative across makes that 16. That means x minus 1 is plus or minus 4. That means x is, taking the 1 across, dot, 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 would be 1 plus or minus 4. So x is not equal to 1. Take away it, negative 3. And x, whoops, is not equal to 1 plus the 4, which is 5. Same place for the marks. One for saying it can't be equal to zero, one for the answer.